Hello and welcome to this demonstration of Hong Kong FATCA and CRS reporting with AOI Hub. This is functionality that we've added to the 2024 version of the template. So here I am in the AOI Hub reporting template. The submitting jurisdiction selected is Hong Kong. and I'm going to show you some of the key features when that's selected. First of all, starting with the options screen, for FATCA, the options are fairly standard because it's a Model 2 standard FATCA report that's been generated. For CRS, there are a few key differences from other jurisdictions. The first point to note is the option include financial institutions with no reportable accounts, i.e. creating nil returns, is not available to select. That's because with the Hong Kong CRS schema, there is no option to create nil returns. Each return needs to have at least one reportable account. The second point to note is the option for create separate submission files for each reporting financial institution is automatically selected. That's because with the schema, a separate submission file, separate XML file is required for each reporting FI. So if I did have multiple FIs in this template, that would create a separate file for each one. Moving on to the configuration section, something to note here is the test submission checkbox is ticked. That's a key point because in order to submit CRS submissions, you first need to file a test submission to the portal. So ensure that that's ticked before you create a test submission and also make sure that's unticked when you're ready to create your live submission file. Moving on to the submitter section, there there is the global intermediary identification number, GIN, for FATCA purposes, but there's no CRS identifier for the submitter. That's because all of the information is contained at the financial institution level. Moving on to the financial institutions, if we look at that FI details, we have there the FATCA GIN and filer category for CRS, it's the AEOI ID. That's the ID that's issued by the IRD AEOI portal. In terms of the FI address, that's required for FATCA purposes, but not for CRS. So that if you had marked this FI as not doing FATCA reporting, no FATCA reporting for this FI, then you would not need to complete the address details. Moving on to the accounts data, that's fairly standard, similar to other jurisdictions. So you have your account information, financial information, account holder names, addresses, tax identification numbers, etc. The one key difference that we'll show you in a moment is that when it comes to filing a correction, there is certain key information that you need to include. Let's move on to creating the reports. I can, if I want to, create both FATCA and CRS reports at the same time. I'm going to choose to do that and click on Continue. That's created the reports. Let's take a look. So here it's created a FATCA and CRS report. Let's take a look at the FATCA one first. If I click on View, take a look at the XML. That's created a fairly standard FATCA XML using the US schema. Take a look at the management report. This is showing me the information that's gone into that submission. So I can see here the GIN, three accounts, the FI details, and then the details of the accounts. With the FATCA reporting, there's also a requirement to encrypt the XML file before it's submitted to the IRS. We provide this AOI Hub IDES encryption tool alongside the template. And it's a simple tool for encrypting. You simply navigate to the XML file. Then Make sure that you select your signing certificate, enter password, 
and the receivers key. Once you have all that set, you click on encrypt and that will then create an encrypted version ready to submit to the IRS via the IDES portal. Let's take a look at the CRS submission now. View reports, have a look at the XML file. That's created the XML in the correct format using version 2 of the IRD schema. We take a look at the management report. This is showing the information that's going into that XML submission. So here we have the summary showing the number of accounts, 90 reportable accounts, and something that's quite important that we'll talk about more in a moment is the number of undocumented accounts that are included in that total of three. We then go on to see the reporting FI details, in this case just the AOI number, and then we have all of the details of the accounts that you can zoom in and have a look at there. For the CRS submission, that is also required to be encrypted and that can be done using the tool that's available to download from the IRD website. So this is the Inland Revenue Department tool. What you would then do is select the data files prepared using self-developed software, click on Browse, select the XML file that we've just created, continue, That's validated successfully. Click on continue. We then have to enter the number of reportable accounts. That was 90 and that's why we provide that summary on the first screen of the management report and the number of undocumented accounts. Again, the reason we provide that. Choose a location to save the encrypted data file to. I've selected that and I've also chosen to use the same file naming convention as for my XML file. Click on continue. You would then proceed to encrypt that using your ESERP file. I can't proceed further with that at the moment because I don't have the necessary um, signing certificate. But if you did, you would complete that. You would have your encrypted version that you could then upload to the portal. Once you've successfully filed your CRS report, you will then get back a serial number from the portal. And if you go back into the view reports here, the file serial number you can record here in the template. And the reason that is particularly useful is that once you enter that and click on update, that's going to copy that serial number to each of the accounts data that was submitted. And the reason that becomes important is that if you need to do a correction for any reason, if you need to file a corrective CRS report, then that serial number is going to be required as part of the correction. I'll just demonstrate that, that to you now. If I go back to the config sheet, select amendment and the type being a CRS correction. If I then go to my accounts data, and I go to one of these accounts and look at the account details and let's assume that this one for some reason I needed to correct. I go to the amend correct tab and you can see in here the file serial number has been included automatically because it's been copied across based on what I entered. I've got the docref ID which is also required and that's automatically there based on what was corrected and I've got the account number as it was previously submitted. So now all I need to do is tick this to say included, select whether it's a correction or deletion, and then that account is ready to be corrected. If I then create reports again, this time just one account that's being corrected, continue, take a look at reports. Here's my correction at the top. View, 
take a look at the XML. This has created a correction with the correct message type indicator and all of the referencing that's required in terms of the corrected doc refs and serial numbers. And that again is ready for encryption and upload. If I look at the management report, what we see there on the summary is the number of accounts, one, and it's also showing me that one account was corrected, no accounts were deleted. That again is something that you need as part of the encryption because it requires you to enter the number of accounts that are corrected and the number of accounts that have been marked for deletion. We hope that you found that demonstration useful. If you have any questions, please get in contact with us.